Hey everyone, Brendan Leslie for FLConservativeVoice.com. We're with State Representative Jason Fisher. We're in Tallahassee and we're talking about some important bills that he's pushing. And one of them being uh, con condemning China for some inhumane actions that they are they are doing in the communist nation. Talk about that. Sure. Thanks for having me on today. I really appreciate it. So House Memorial 791 condemns the communist country of China for their practice of forced organ harvesting. So it's not something that everybody knows about, but it's something that some constituents brought forward to me. And uh, as we looked into it, you know, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo actually was talking about it uh, about a year and a half ago, back when he was um, Secretary of State for Trump. Uh, and what our bill calls is for the federal government to actually take action. So Congress and the president, uh, we need to go after China. We know that they are forcibly harvesting organs from political dissidents and for people that are, are being kept, uh, kept in jail, uh, a lot of times against their own will. Now, your opposition, the leftists, the media, they're all going to say, well, what does this have to do with Florida? Why are you wasting your time on this? What's your answer to that? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's an egregious violation of human rights. And, and there is a practice of organ transplant tourism that's going on. And so, yeah, it's not a practice that's happening in this country directly, but people are traveling from all over the world to get organs uh, from China. So if you look at their numbers, it's about 90,000 transplant a year that are happening in, in China. It well exceeds their um, willful donations of organs. And so we need to do everything we can. That, that means economically, that means politically, anything we can do to stop this inhumane practice. Because people who are fleeing those countries, people who are coming, their family members are kept there. Their family members are being tortured. Uh, and, and in some cases, uh, they're, they're being killed in order to hor hor um, harvest those organs. And it's disgusting. Now, it's really ballsy of you to stand up to the communist uh, nation of China. Everyone just kind of mm. ignores them. I don't know why. Uh, what gave you uh, that sense of urgency that something had to be done and Florida had to lead the way? Well, some of it's personal to me. So my wife's originally from Singapore, but her family escaped the communist country of China when Mao took over. And so uh, our family has kind of taken that on as a personal mission to continuously combat the, the communist regime regime in China. Uh, there's other parts of my family where, you know, they fled communism or Nazism and come to America. And so for me, this fight with China is very personal. Uh, this isn't the only try to, this isn't the only way where I'm trying to go after China. This just happens to be the, the most recent one. And if your bill goes through and the governor DeSantis ends up signing it, uh, what kind of impact do you hope that has across the nation? Well, I think I think the United States taking a big stand um, against China in this area and highlighting the terrible practices that are going on in there is very important. A lot of times the left uh, and even some people on the right, the more moderate, you know, right folks want to talk about China as a political force or as an economic force. But we have to talk about the human rights violations that are happening there and show the evil things that are happening under communism in China and not just think of them. Oh, well, you know, through commercialization and through globalization, they're going to somehow get better. No, we need to talk about the, the crazy things that are happening in their country. Uh, and if that means that we don't manufacture products there, if that means that the, the tariffs are higher against China because of their practices, then, then so be it. We cannot allow those practices to continue and we can't be the beneficiaries of those practices either. How infuriating is it for you to see uh, President Trump's stance on China, a strong stance on China, and then flip flop to President Biden's now loosey goosey stance on China? Yeah, I will tell you, sometimes I just miss the way that President Trump says China, right? Like if there's something about it, uh, what the I will China say- China virus. <laughs> Well, uh, so so Trump, we need strong leadership um, on that area. I think that that Trump uh, was really strong on China. He was really strong on a lot of the enemies of America, and and that's what that's what China is. They they are an enemy of America. Whether the current administration chooses to recognize them as that, uh, China is at war with us, and Biden administration not be may not be at war with them. Uh, and, and one of the things that I love about Governor DeSantis is he's taken strong stances against our enemies, and so kind of in that same vein. Uh, I'm excited to work on this bill at the state level uh, and get us all involved because Governor DeSantis uh, is, a, is a, a true champion for freedom, both here in Florida and across the globe. So we have the foreign ev evil in China, mm -hmm. and then we have the domestic evil, which is disguised in critical race theory across the nation. And that's something that you're, you're taking the lead on. Governor DeSantis announced we need to ban critical race theory in the private sector and the state funded sector. Talk about how you're trying to make that possible. Sure. So so I would just share with you a little bit of my background. I'm a former school board member, and I've been on this issue since 2012, trying to highlight some of the problems that are in our textbooks, that are in our curriculum. And we need to do everything we can to make sure that our kids are taught the truth. Now, the left always says 
their excuse is, oh, it's not in the curriculum. You'll never find it in the textbooks. Find me the words critical race theory. What's mm -hmm. your response to that? Well, it doesn't have to say critical race theory in it to be an implementation strategy of critical race theory. So I'll give you a, an example of a book that happened in Duval County. I, I found it, brought it up, and it was about the um, invasion of Iraq. And it was taught it was taught through the lens of a librarian in, in Iraq. And it depicts American troops committing war crimes, which we know did not happen. But it was mandated curriculum in Duval County that that book would be included. Things like that, that's insane. We shouldn't be teaching our kids that our heroes are, are villains. So that's not the critical race theory part, but that's the insidiousness of, 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 of it. I think that we need to go through all of the curriculum. We need to go through all of the textbooks and figure out you know, where those issues are and highlight it. And we need to call out the officials who've approved it, whether they be the instructors, the instructional personnel, school board members, superintendent. Um, I, I think that we need to combat it. And we need laws on the books that will enforce that because right now there's no real accountability. And your legislation that you're pushing through would do what? So the legislation that, that, I'm, that uh, I've proposed uh, would prevent school districts uh, from implementing critical race theory in the curriculum. So not teaching it as a theory, right, but actually implementing in the classroom. We should not be teaching our kids to hate each other. So it would, it would prevent that from happening. Uh, the other thing it would do is uh, for corporations who are going woke, look, if you're going to go woke, you're going to go broke. And so you shouldn't be able, you shouldn't force your employees to believe an ideology that teaches them to hate each other. Right? We shouldn't teach our kids that and we shouldn't teach our fellow citizens that. Now, how, how would we keep track of something like that? How would we enforce it? I think it's got to be enforced at the local level. And so we're going to pass, we're looking at passing state laws to make that happen. But that's where you, you know, you have to file, uh, take it, take them to court. And do you feel like you're going to get any pushback from anyone in the legislature on this? Obviously the left, but do you think we can get everyone on the right on the same page? I'm hopeful that we'll get most of the folks on the right on the same page. I think it's resonating with parents. It's resonating uh, with people. I, it's resonating with teachers that I've talked to back home in Jacksonville. Uh, not everybody agrees with it, but the vast majority of people I think are on board with getting rid of critical race theory, uh, not as some kind of philosophy that's taught academically that gets discussed in some kind of College you know, so, you know, Socratic method type way. But when you're teaching kids to hate each other, we've got to stop that. And so uh, I think there's a tremendous movement in legislatures across the country to combat critical race theory. Uh, and I think Florida is looking at that. We've got House Bill 7. We've got a bill that Representative Fine and I have put together. There's multiple ways to try to get this accomplished. And How do you feel about cameras in the classroom? That's something that a lot of parents have voiced to me that they would like, because then if the teachers know that they, they are, uh, could be held accountable, maybe they think to themselves, oh, maybe I shouldn't break the rules or maybe I shouldn't push these lies. Right. There's definitely challenges with having cameras in the classroom because, um, you know, I do think that parents have a fundamental right to know what's happening in their classroom. But you might have behavioral issues in a classroom that's related to one student. You might have some other kind of issues that's health related with a student that you wouldn't want other parents to have access to. So how do you I don't know that just putting every a camera in every classroom is going to be the right way to go. But how do we make sure that parents are more involved and have bigger say in what happens in those classrooms? I mean, I think one of the things that we've learned from COVID that there was real problems because those classrooms were being held online in a way where parents could see them uh, and it wasn't invading the rights of the other students. And I think that's the challenge of how you got to balance, balance those rights. The parents deserve to know what's happening in the classroom, uh, and especially when it comes to their kid. But, you know, the, the challenges of other kids is a whole different story. What kind of... Um... How does society change if we rid it of critical race theory? So I, th I think the fundamental problem with what critical race theory puts together is it teaches people to hate each other. Uh, we've seen uh, in the, what do they call it? The summer of love when there were riots, there were destroying of police cars and mostly peaceful protests. Fiery, That's, but peaceful. That, right, right. Fiery, but peaceful. You know, I understand the right to peaceably protest and speak up and have your voice heard. But I think what we saw during some of that was the outcropping of critical race theory, where people were taught to hate each other, that they were taught inherently one person was bad and the other person was good, um, or that they were oppressor and somebody else was oppressed. We've got to get away from that and find a way to build bridges and bring people back together. And I think that's what happens when you get rid of the, the insane ideology that critical race theory pushes. It divides America and we need, we need, to, be, we need to heal. We need things that will pull us together. That's State Representative Jason Fisher leading the way on critical race, fighting against critical race theory. And China, we appreciate all your efforts and thank you for joining us today.
Thanks for having me.